Hello Auggies worldwide. My name is Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Welcome to another episode of Ask Dave in which I will introduce the Step IR Big IR antenna. It's my new vertical and becomes the new station reference antenna. It covers 80 meters through 6 meters, including 60 meters, and I'm pretty excited about it. I want to give a special shout out to Brad Rich, N6GR, an Augie and patron who traveled up here from Albuquerque, New Mexico to assist me with installation. For a long time now, my primary station antenna has been a Butternut HF9V. It's a good antenna, and I've had it for close to 30 years. A few years ago, I completely rebuilt it, including the replacement of one of the expensive RF capacitors. I stripped it all the way down to the last nut and bolt. I put it back together and put it up and added some radials. It worked well, so well that it replaced my horizontal loop. In fact, I took my horizontal loop down and cut it up into radials so I could add even more to the butternut. For several years, this was my best antenna and was the one that I compared all review antennas to. Well, the butternut got old. As it wiggled in the wind, the connections between the various tubes were flaky, so much so that I could not use it with my amplifier because the amplifier kept dropping out every time the butternut hiccuped. The search was on for a new antenna. I didn't consider Step IR because their antennas are pretty expensive and pretty high-end. However, Augie Brad Rich got it in his mind that I should have a Step IR antenna. At the time, I was considering something like the AV640 or R8. But Step IR at StepIR.com got in touch with me with a very enthusiastic pitch for their big IR antenna. We had a bit of a negotiation over price. I finally settled on paying $1,000 for $2,500 worth of antennas and accessories. I decided to get a few options. The primary option is the 80 meter loading coil. This coil allows the antenna to operate on 80 meters. By selecting taps on the coil, you can operate anywhere in the 80 meter band, and this can be done remotely. This is a very different approach from multiband verticals such as the Cushcraft or High Gain, which only cover a very small portion of the 80 meter band that is selected when you set up the antenna. Now it is true that for any given setting, the big IR will only cover a few kilohertz on 80 meters, but by electronically changing the taps on the 80 meter coil and by adjusting the length of the metal tape, the big IR can be tuned anywhere in the 80 meter band. Another option I selected was for the high wind strengthening kit. It ships from the factory with the thick metal plate that mounts across the housing for the stepping motor to protect it from the high winds. The problem is that this metal interferes with the operation of the 80 meter loading coil. So they sent me a fiberglass piece that I can use. We did not have time to include it in the install, so I will install it and talk about it in a separate video. Let's talk about how the Big IR works. Look at the conceptual drawing on the right. There is a very stiff metal tape with holes punched in it to mesh with the gear. This tape, made of an alloy of copper and beryllium, is quite stiff and has good conductivity. It's wound around the tape reel in the base. There is a gear connected to a stepping motor that can unwind the tape and push it up into the housing. The controller pushes enough tape up to make a vertical antenna of just the right length. The reason they use a stepping motor is because with the stepping motor, you can count the steps and all the steps are the same length. When the antenna is not in use, you can retract the tape completely. The tape is stiff enough that it goes right up the tube and does not kink. The outer weather covering is made of fiberglass and plastic and stands 32 feet tall. 
I also got the 80 meter loading coil which has five taps and these can be completely switched out for coverage on 40 meters and above. Tuning on 80 meters is a combination of picking the right tap and the right length of tape. I point out here that there is a controller that goes in the shack. This controller is used to select the band you will be operating on or the portion of the band that you wish to use. For frequencies 40 meters and above, positioning the tape only needs to be done once per band unless you really wanted to tweak it to get it just right. Now for 15 meters and above, if you wish, there is a special feature that allows you to make the antenna three quarters of a wavelength long instead of a quarter. This gives you a slightly different pattern and more gain. So this works for 15, 12, 10, and 6. Let's take a look at the unboxing. Okay, here's the unboxing of the big IR. You see the long pieces of fiberglass tubes. They're very strong. These form the weather housing. Up toward the top are these green tubes, which get smaller toward the top. There's a little vent up at the top. Here you see the ground radials with four radials per kit for a total of 12. They'll attach to the 80 meter coil right here that you see here. Now I would note that I already have a whole bunch of radials in place from the old butternut. This is a little box that is used for a control cable transient suppression, which I will install later. This is the box that has the gear. It's right there, and you can see the reel of tape that goes uh, to into the antenna housing there, and that is the stepper motor that controls that. This is the controller itself, which we will get to know better in a later video. They gave me a great deal of control cable. It actually takes eight wires to get out there to control everything. In here you see various little packages like the Big IR Guy attachment kits and some of the attachments for the control cables. Here's the connector for the control cables. It was fun to put that together, but I did it. I made it work. More various hardware. There is a kit for the coil hardware. This one right here is the power cord. It actually takes 24 volts to operate this cable. Right here is an RS-232 that connects from the radio to the controller so you can get automatic frequency changes. This right here is the high wind kit, which is very large and will stiffen up the bottom of the thing quite a bit. These are various little pieces of heat shrink tubing and rubber boots and so on to keep the outer housing dry inside for the tape. So this is all the various parts and pieces that have to be put together. It took us an entire day to assemble all this, which will be in an upcoming video. Everything is constructed very, very sturdily. This right here is the two-foot tube that you're supposed to put in the ground, preferably in concrete. I'm going to reuse the tube that is already there for the butternut, which is 22 inches deep. And this tube is a bit too long for that, so I've got a workaround using a piece of three-quarter inch iron pipe. In the next video, I'll show how the installation went. I've got lots of video of the installation. It took us an entire day working very hard to get everything in place. We did a lot of testing and I'm very happy with the results. A lot of people ask me what's the best way to help my channel. The very best way and something that you can do easily is to subscribe. YouTube's primary figure of merit as to how good a channel is is the number of subscribers. If you wish, you can click subscribe and then you can click on the bell. That will give you notifications every time I put up a new video. And of course, when you become a subscriber, you become an Augie, that is a follower of OG. I also have a page on my website at dcastler.com support. There is a tip jar there. Also, there is a link to Patreon where you can set up recurring support. Also, I have the videos for tech and amateur extra on thumb drives. I hope soon to have the general as well. 
Thank you very much for all of your support. It's how I was able to pay for this antenna and bring you several videos about its construction and operation. Until we next meet, 73.